YouTube buzz it going. The Goat House is back with my NFL top 100 players of 2020 through 2021 here. Uh, always excited to do this video every single year. I'm sure I'll get bashed in the comments per usual, but it's all right. We're having fun here. Um, so yeah, this is based on the regular season and the entire postseason as well. It's how I always do it. Um, you know, players that don't go to the playoffs don't get penalized, of course, but players that showcase their talents in the most important part of the season, the playoffs, uh, definitely help their their uh, their cause here in, in a video like this. So uh, separating these videos, uh, you know, into videos here. First one, 181 in this video, and we're going to keep going down the list. Top 10 will be in its own video. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Really excited about it. Follow us on Twitter for constant NFL talk. Subscribe to our channel for constant NFL content, all kinds of offseason content on the channel, a lot more to come, more than anybody out there. Link in the description and comments for anything that you need. Here's a Twitter. Um, I have you guys kind of voting. We'll reveal this in the last video, the top 10 video. Uh, combining the season and the playoffs, who's the best offensive player, defensive player? We have to repost a new poll for this one because we're on to the next round. That's who you guys voted for. So well, on to uh, the finals, actually, for offense. So every poll's on here. You check it out. And we're just constantly talking. You can see this. This is all today. Constantly talking about everything. Tom Brady, Bruce Arians, a couple of rascals. Uh, yeah, sneak peek of this video that I'm recording right now. So you're going to want to follow this Twitter. Constant news there. Number 100, Keenan Allen. A lot of receivers on this list. I don't normally put a whole bunch of receivers on my top 100 list, but I think this year is really where the receivers started to take over, um, You know, making that position even more important than it's ever been. It's always been a pretty important position. But, um, yeah, Keenan Allen coming in at number 100, so that kind of shows how good – the NFL talent is because you know he's all the way down at 100 but I mean there's players that didn't make this list that I feel like you know thinking about him they're top 100 players it's just how many good players there are Keenan Allen I think he's I think he's been you know I think he's been the style receiver that everyone's looking for but for a long time so that's why I really like Keenan Allen you know th those uh receivers that are built like all outside receivers but they do everything you put them inside put them outside route runner possession guy contested catch guy good after the catch so yeah you got to respect keenan allen's game uh, a lot of good receivers that i thought were you know a little better maybe a little more productive it's not all about production you know your production matters uh, i'm not i'm not going to go off your basic stats um yeah how complete consistent of a season they had uh you know did they help their team win, impact them in big games, create for their teammates, things like that. Uh, but I got Keenan Allen, number 100. Can't wait to watch him and Justin Herbert for uh, a full season uh, next year. I think the Chargers will be a pretty damn good team here. So they're at 100. Uh, he's at 100. Number 99 is going to be Garrett Bowles from the Broncos. Never thought we would see Garrett Bowles making a top 100 list. Really didn't think that. Uh, but here we are. Rough season last year. This season, I mean, he didn't give up a single sack, which is ridiculous. Maybe you'd be you think you'd be higher ranked on the list when he doesn't give up zero sacks. He still gets quite a bit of penalties. That kind of hurts his team a little bit. And I think the difference between he's always kind of had the the strength and the talent. Um, you know, I think last year and this year, sure he improved his game a little bit. But I think the main thing was he got called for all of those penalties last year. This year, they kind of let offense linemen hold a little more, so that benefited him, but he's still a very uh, solid tackle, and he showed that he can improve. Zero sacks let up. He does have the penalties. Zero sacks let up. Um, and you see the Broncos. You know, We, we, we kind of like their roster. Quarterback is question mark, still kind of is. We kind of like their roster going into last year, but now and you kind of wondered quarterback, uh, and again, still kind of is somewhat of a question. But at the time, you kind of – worry about the offensive line that was a question too but now it's starting to fade away offensive line is not too much a question and it starts with the left tackle as soon as the left tackle improves you might be in business here so yeah big time surprising big time season there for Garrett Bowles and the Broncos uh living up to his first round hype there 98 Fletcher Cox oh yeah Fletcher Cox didn't maybe have the crazy productive season we're used to last year maybe somewhat similar last year but we're used to seeing like crazy you know basic stats wise crazy production he did have good production um you know good enough production here key thing I think he created for his team quite a bit he was doubled you know he was doubled more than actually any interior defense lineman in football which is crazy um you know and he still stopped throwing at a high level he still got some pressure 
Uh, but I think he helped, you know, his impact, you know, help create for his teammates, you know, impacted the rest of the team, rest of the defense. And the Eagles, that defense survives it all just because of their defensive line and a leader like Fletcher Cox. So, yeah, he still makes the list, even though the production was a little bit down. But he's a, he was a, he's a disruptor. He's a creator. That's what I view of Fletcher Cox there. So he's at number 98. Number 97, I mean, Baker Mayfield. Uh, you know, some quarterbacks on this list, and we already see one, Baker Mayfield. Big-time year for him, you know. I think the system, uh, Stefanski's system, maybe simplifies it for a quarterback uh, until, you know, you got to play catch up or the run isn't working. Then it makes it harder than the normal quarterback's job would be. Uh, but it does, it does simplify it, you know, for the most part. But it's year one for Baker Mayfield in that system, and I thought he played very well in it. You know, I think it's it, you know in you know a lot of play play action heavy. You know, part is part of their game. Obviously, I thought it really fit Baker Mayfield and Baker Mayfield fit that, you know, what he was able to do. I think you have to have some kind of, you got to, you know, break down plays in your head pretty fast. And then with your feet as well. Uh, and I thought he did that. He had big play ability all over him. You know, when they needed him to show up, he, he, um, you know, made those big plays throwing downfield, but you know, how you're showing his toughness too when he ran and, you know, got those converted those, I can't really count how many, I feel like he counted. I feel like he converted so many first downs in the crucial situations with his legs. So I like that a lot about him, the toughness and kind of back to playing where he was, you know, when he finally came in his rookie year there. So uh, yeah, he comes in at number 97 on the list. Number 96 is a rookie and just won the Super Bowl. Antoine Winfield Jr. Uh, makes the list and yeah, his, his play, you know, in the playoffs, you know, he didn't miss a game, but the Super Bowl definitely helped too. You know, he's sitting here close to 100, but he had a really productive year. Uh, you talk about the impact, um, you know, and he, yeah, he was productive again, you know, I guess stats wise, you know, there's a lot of stat watchers out there, but I think his impact was more than that, you know, playing all over the place, you know, playing deep, you know, free safety, playing strong, playing like a slot corner in the box, almost like a linebacker blitzing did everything for this team. You know, it felt like a, the team was missing a player like this, uh, and, and it, they benefited from adding a player like this and was was crucial for them. And, and yeah, again, any type of game plan, covering deep, um, you know, if they need him to. So he's kind of every style, I was going to say safety, but defensive back in today's era. So he's a big-time addition, uh, was crucial for them pretty much every step of the way. But the sewer roll, you can see that, how much of a game plan a guy like him was uh, for them. So he comes in at number 96 here. Number 95, Kirk Cousins makes the list. So we've seen Baker Mayfield, now Kirk Cousins. And you see Kirk Cousins tucking the ball and running. I thought that was a big thing for him this year. Um, you know, he's not the best runner, but as soon as he started to use his legs, he played the best he's ever played in his career. You know, second half of the season, but more than that too. You know, I say about 70, yeah, 70, 75% of the season, he played out of his mind, you know, well inside of a top 10 quarterback. Not that he is in general or finished that way as a whole season combined. But he played pretty damn ridiculous down the stretch of the season. Uh, and the Vikings, you know, were one of the top, believe it or not, one of the top-tier teams in offense. Uh, their beat-up defense really uh, let them down. But, yeah, that, that's kind of where I was starting to write off Kirk because he just would not move outside the pocket. In today's era, you need some kind of movement. You know, we know he can pass from the pocket or on rollout, not moving super fast. But all of a sudden, he just started to – just got to him that I need to start moving. And that really opened things up. So, yeah, very accurate passer. Yet, it was the best he's played ever, I think, in his career. Down the most the season, but not in the beginning. It started pretty rough. But, yeah, where he ended up, it, it was pretty ridiculous. So, we'll see if that continues for it uh, for him. But he comes at number 95 after a pretty good year. Uh, number 94, Jeffrey Simmons. Another guy, you talk about Fletcher Cox. You know, he did produce, but, you know, not a whole bunch. It was more of his impact and what he did for his teammates. You know, I thought Jeffrey Simmons pretty much was the Titans front seven. Um, you know, I mean, you credit some, some other guys, Harold Landry solid, John Brown solid when he was in there. Uh, but Jeffrey Simmons really had to carry this group. He took on tons of double teams. You know, he was the only really pressure rate, stopped the run at a high level. So, um, you know, if they didn't have Jeffrey, the defense was pretty much a disaster, but if they didn't have him, it would have been a major disaster because he was taking on a lot of those double teams and still creating more of the impact than any other player really in that front seven maybe on the entire defense. So, yeah, I thought I thought another guy that was a disruptor, big-time disruptor, big-time creator for for his team, his defense. So, um, yeah, and he's re very effective stopping the run. He's not really going to miss run stops. He's going to win his run his run reps. Um, so that really stood out to me. So he comes at number 94, bright future for him. Number 93, Brandon Scherf. So you see a guard come up on the list. Yeah, he had a very 
uh, you know, consistent season. We know he's going to be a free agent. We know he's one of the top uh, guards and probably the top one in free agency. Um, so the, the Washington football team offensive line actually played better than expected, given that they didn't have, even though Trent Williams didn't really play for him the last time he was on their team in a while, um, even though it was just a year ago. Uh, you know, they had to move, Morgan Moses had to move around a little bit. They had guys filling in at left tackle, you know, and they lost Eric Flowers. So you kind of, we kind of thought that this, this offensive line would be pretty bad. Uh, you know, it ended up being, you know, it wasn't great, but it ended up being better than expected. I think a guy like Scherf, uh, and no matter the situation, he, he's good too. Sometimes you're only as good, you only look as good as your unit is, but I, you know, Scherf doesn't really f- uh, fall under that category. You know, I think he can make a unit look better. Uh, and he, even on a weaker unit, he still looks at his best. So, uh, that kind of applied this season for Brandon Scherf there, and we'll see what he does in free agency. I think Washington would like to get him back, maybe likely to get him back. 92, Demarcus Lawrence. So, yeah, Demarcus Lawrence, ever ever since he got that contract, been extremely disappointing, underwhelming, and that kind of continued in early this year. I think the second half of the season, he went on a tear. He really started to turn it up, um, you know, making that impact, creating turnovers, and that's at Demarcus Lawrence that earned that contract. So, you know, that kept the Cowboys alive, kept them in games, making those big plays. Uh, started to get more pressure, hits on the quarterback than he than – because he, he kind of went quiet there for a little bit, a little disappointing. So he's be, he's definitely back on track the way he finished this season in the second, in the second half here. So I think he can uh, hopefully continue on that, that route there. But he comes in at number 92. You know, the way he played the second half of the season, you know, he's easily a top 50 play, well inside the top 50. So uh, we'll see if he can continue that. Number 91, Emmanuel Ogba, maybe another name. Uh, that we probably didn't expect to see on the list, you know, if you were to predict before the year. But Emmanuel Ugba, who actually liked a lot of Oklahoma State, um, was just kind of a rotation guy, solid rotation guy. But now he's a starter for the Dolphins and made a major impact. I think they won games because of Emmanuel Ugba. You know, the impact he made, the forced fumbles at the right time, the uh, yeah, what how he created uh, was definitely their best pure pass rusher. You know, Van Noy at times used like a pass rusher. Um, you know, so I th- I thought he would make a major impact. You know. Pretty good production, nothing crazy, you know, because top 100, we're thinking crazy production for the most part. Pretty damn good production. Yeah, but another guy that I thought just made that major impact in the big games, the big moments of games, so that's why he's on the list. So number 91, reviving his career, that's good to see. Number 90, Montez Sweat uh, of the Washington football team, so another Washington football team player. Yeah, Montez Sweat was very productive uh, getting after the quarterback. Him and Chase Young, an excellent duo of the future. Cannot wait to continue to, continue to watch that because I was very high. on Everybody was high on Chase Young. I was extremely high on Montez Sweat. It was top 10 on my board, uh, and the and Washington football team got him later in the first after a trade-up, so that was big time for them. Um, and, yeah, he had an excellent year. Uh, using that freakish, you know, length of his, uh, you know, to uh, get to the quarterback there. So, yeah, he had the traits, and he's really starting to develop, and it really helps uh, that he has Ron Rivera and, uh, you know, the rest of that uh, defense next to him. So he's definitely a guy that will continue to climb this list if we were to predict uh, going forward. 89, we make a Fitzpatrick here uh, of the Steelers. Yeah, not as uh, productive a year as last year, I guess I'd say. Not as good of a year, but still very uh, – very productive, very important to that defense. Even though I think the fr- I think the front seven kind of creates for these guys in the back end, um, you know. So I think the front seven guys are m- the better players for the Steelers, and you know, for this year at least, um, you know. But yeah, he does have to kind of carry that load. And the corner started to play, you know, they're still solid, but they started to go downhill a little bit. And then, um, yeah, Edmonds would struggle at times. So yeah, I, I did think Fitzpatrick, even though the front seven kind of creates for these guys, he's not really creating for. The rest, I do think he has to carry uh, that secondary at times, not all the time, a bit. And, you know, he's pretty instinctive reading the quarterback and always making plays there. So he makes the list once again, number 89 on the list for Minka Fitzpatrick. 88 is going to be Zach Cunningham. Um, was a machine for this Texans defense. Pretty much had to be because Bernardrick McKinney got hurt. And uh, the rest of the defense wasn't too good besides, you know, obvious player, uh, you know, obvious other player there. Uh, but yeah, Cunningham was all over the place. Uh, and you see that this team really couldn't stop the run. It was pretty much Cunningham trying to stop the run by himself. It was ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, he, he's, you know, if he took, took him away from the middle there, they're going to have disaster. <laughs> I mean, it was already kind of a disaster, but it was gonna be really bad, but Cunningham, uh, yeah, extremely productive, uh, season, you know, tackling machine. I believe he, yeah, he led the NFL in tackles, but, um, yeah, it felt like he was getting better and better, too. Like, you kind of going into the year, who's better, McKinney, Cunningham? I know McKinney got hurt, but I think Cunningham 
you know, now it kind of feels like he's the guy. You know, he's the guy of that group. And now they got a Lovey Smith defense. You know, they're going to run more of that 4 3 defense where you don't really. Can you use two inside linebackers? Could Cunningham go outside? You know, so that's going to be interesting to see. They're obviously going to roll with him. He's going to be their first choice of where that he fits best. But that's definitely going to be interesting there for Cunningham and the Texans. Uh, 87, two Texans in a row. J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt didn't light up the, I guess, the sack um, stats if you're, you're going to look at that. But uh, constant pressure. And I do think... Um, I, I do think, you know, pressure, you know, it used to be sacks was the only thing ever, everyone looked at uh, and nobody realized pressure or any of that. And then people started taking the pressure stats. And now I think, you know, it went from sacks being overrated to I think pressure being a little overrated. You know, people just kind of look at the pressure, you know, pressure's great. But sometimes, I mean, you got to turn it into sacks sometimes. So I guess that's a knock on J.J. Watt. Why couldn't he turn more of those into sacks? Because you, you ultimately you do want to get to the quarterback. So I think, you know, they we got to find an even ground there, how we're valuing both those things. Uh, but, yeah, he was con- – a big reason he's here because he was productive in those categories. But big reason, he's constantly in the backfield, shedding blocks, uh, double teams, may- maybe more than – he's up there at the top in, in – all the NFL defenders, double team, maybe the most in the league. Uh, and that means something to me. Uh, and then still shedding those blocks and then constantly in the backfield disrupting plays. So J.J. Watt uh, definitely makes the list for those reasons. Um, and you just talk about him getting traded. We'll see if that actually happens. But he comes in number 87. 86 going to be Cam Hayward. So we see another Pittsburgh Steeler here. Another, yeah, kind of a disruptor on the defensive line. There's just a group of guys come together and they create for the rest of their team. Uh, he, he is one of them there and obviously stops the run at a pretty high level. I think he's kind of consistent. You take the, kind of the categories for defense linemen like Cameron Hayward. I think he's kind of consistent in all those categories there. Um, but, yeah, people wonder, like, who who's doing what? You know, you see people with Bud Dupree is going to go somewhere else. He's not going to be as good. People just say that because there's so many good guys in the D-line. But does that apply? It doesn't really make any sense to me because does that apply to all of these guys? You know, they're all really good players in the, in the defensive front, and they create for the rest of their team. Uh, 85, Jack Conklin, did another one that I did not expect, you know, if I had to predict going in there and making the top 100. In Tennessee, we knew he was r- nasty run blocking tackle, one of the best in football. Pass protection, he wasn't too good on Tennessee. You know, he kind of was losing balance a lot. So I did worry about that with the Browns, but we knew what they wanted to do. One, number one was run the ball. He obviously did it as expected there. But he was really good in pass protection too. Um, you know, a lot of lot of uh, play action rollouts for Baker and Conklin kind of had to keep him clean, not making sure, uh, making sure no one's just coming from you know his backside before he gets he gets his body turned. Um, so I thought he did a really good job. Was way better in pass protection. I think they made his job a little easier in Cleveland, and they did a good, really good scheme, really good uh, coaching staff there. Uh, the rest of the unit obviously makes you know can help you out a whole lot. Um, so that was kind of a perfect situation. Ended up being much better than expected. Very uh, consistent uh, for the Browns' offensive line, which might have been the best in football year one. After already you know adding just adding additions, I guess just bringing in guys. Uh, 84 Joey Bosa. So you know, kind of like Watt, another one where he had an insane amount of pressure, and that's great, and that's you know a big reason why he's on the list. Really good player, obviously. Um, and he was playing hurt through times. You know, he missed a little bit of time too. Tough dude. You could definitely see he was playing hurt and still making an impact. Um, I really want him to turn those pressures in the sacks uh, because he got so many of those pressures where you get so many of them, and that's great. But then you start to be like, got to turn these into sacks. You know, not all of them. We got to get some of these into sacks and you know make more of that impact that you should be making. So maybe uh, playing hurt affected that a little bit. So I next year I really you know and if he. That's what's kind of what the pressures mean. It means he's very, very close. You know, I think some people want to see all these pressures. This guy's number a top ten player because he had all these pressures. You know, I think you actually, you know, to be the top ten player, you got to be, you know, more complete. You got to actually get to the quarterback. But what the pressures mean is he's that close. So, just like that, he can turn all these into even more impact, and that cre- that creates more than just sacks. It can create turnovers. You know, quarterback hits, great turnovers, whether it's a fumble, interception, whatever it may be. So he's very close to being an elite uh, in a season, um, you know, and maybe being the you know, defensive player of the year. Very close, definitely possible with Joey Bosa. Um, but, yeah, stay healthy, turn those pressures into sacks. Still a very productive year for him. 83 is going to be James Bradbury of the Giants. Um, yeah, really good season for him going to, from Carolina to, to the Giants. You know, last year in Carolina, first half of the season played 
uh, like a top 100 player and then kind of went back to normal second half of the year. So that was kind of what you wonder about the Giants. Can he stay consistent when he goes to the Giants? Can he stay consistent? I thought he was pretty damn consistent throughout this year. Um, yeah, kind of a lockdown guy. I kind of like those guys. You don't hear his name a bunch because they're really not throwing to his side. Um, yeah, so covering the number ones, locking them down. Uh, so, yeah, very, I thought, consistent and impressive year. I guess you kind of lived up to that contract. I think it's a pretty pretty close to complete defense. You know, they could use another edge rusher in there. Um, the defensive line's fantastic. I think the secondary, the secondary in general just played every player. Every single player in the secondary just played better than expected. I think much better than expected. So Bradbury finds himself in the list after a consistent season uh, at number 83. 82 is going to be David Onyemata from the Saints. I think one of the more underrated players in football. Uh, maybe another guy we wouldn't have predicted to make the top 100 list. Uh, but yeah, he was a huge piece of the Saints defense. It kind of goes unnoticed. Everyone wants to bring up other guys that are deserving, but guys like DeMar the big name, DeMario Davis, Cam Jordan, uh, you know, guys like that. But Onyemata was a I mean, yeah, he was he was a disruptor in every phase of the game. You know, he was getting good, really good interior pressure. Was a dominant run stopper. You know, I thought he made his impact shown. You know, in the run in his with his run stopping ability on crucial downs in games. Um, you know, constantly in the backfield creating. So, um, yeah, I I thought I thought he I think he's one of the more underrated players in the year. I don't think he gets talked about enough. Um, so big time season for him. I, I thought you know you can probably debate that he was maybe the best. Uh, Defensive player on a Saints team this year. You know, debatable. Um, I got somebody higher, but it's he's definitely up there. Um, more than one guy higher. But 81, uh, Jordan Poyer. So the last one of today's episode. Jordan Poyer comes at 81. Um, yeah, very productive across the board, um, you know, in every category. You know, coverage uh, and then help stopping the run. Very instinctive. Seen a, seen him fly around the field, make big-time plays. Uh, that's just kind of Jordan Poyer, how, how he's always been. Uh, going to be very consistent, not really going to miss tackles. You can rely on a guy like this. So, yeah, I thought he was a machine everywhere. You know, him and Hyde, really good duo. I thought Poyer's the more consistent guy, more of the guy you can rely on. Uh, but, yeah, again, the production production matters. I'm not going to base everything off, off stats, but he kind of filled out the production sheet, I guess, across the board, not just like basic stats, but um, and made his impact shown across the board completely. Um, so he comes in at 81. So that's 100 through 81. That's our first 20. Uh, the next 20 will be tomorrow, um, and then we'll keep going on. It will be 20 by 20, 20 each video, and then we got uh, the top 10 in one video. So really excited about that. Our off-season content has already started, a uh, lot of it on, on the channel, whether it's free agency, trades, um, drafts, mock drafts, any kind of draft coverage. We got all of it and a lot more to come. Uh, the news will start picking up. The breaking news will break it all down. So excited to keep doing new, this and that, and that off-season content at the same time. Make sure, make sure you follow our Twitter for instant talk on news and anything football related. Uh, updates on the channel, when to expect things are on the Twitter. So check it out. Link in the description comments for that at Godhouse NFL. Please smash the like button, subscribe, turn notifications on so you don't miss a thing here. It's going to do it for this one, though. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Goodbye.